Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So, some of the biggest questions in our story this season are going to revolve around Arsa and Sloane. The first and most expansive of these questions is bound to revolve around Arsa, namely, what is she? Although, I feel like you could rephrase that to who is she? That question in itself contains a lot more questions. What is her allegiance? How does she know about the Witness? And even, what is her origin? It's that third question that we'll really be concerning ourselves with today because I think it's the most tantalizing answer when you get to it. Spoiler alert if you haven't read the title and thumbnail, things from here on outwards get a little bit wild. This is the first of a series of videos that I'm going to make on Asa and Sloan from this season, but it's all starting here and it does start in the middle of their story. The reason why for this is going to become pretty apparent, but basically, when you do answer that question of what is Asa's origin and what is she, everything that comes before has a lot more intriguing context to it based on that answer. Suffice to say, if you read the thumbnail, you might have an idea of what that is already, but regardless, we're going to need to continue from this halfway point just so that we can start the story with all the context we truly could use. To give you all the context for this halfway point, Sloane and Asa have really only just been properly introduced, we'll say, and it's been under some pretty stressful circumstances. There have been moments where there's been a glimpse or two prior, but it's not really something where I feel like Asa and Sloane's relationship has truly developed. This is the moment when that really starts to happen. In this previous encounter that I mentioned, Asa saved Sloane from the forces of Zivor Rath and now is helping to bring her to a place of shelter. Deep within Titan, under the remains of some Golden Age wreckage and in a cave where there's still a pocket of air, Sloane found some answers about her new friend. It also includes a lot of talk about Sloane's ghost, Shiohan, and it all comes from the Shiohan scuba shell lore tab. And also, I'm so sorry to my Irish friends if I'm absolutely butchering that pronunciation, I don't know if I can trust the online pronunciations, but they're the only ones I think I have right now, so for the time being, I'm really sorry if I get that wrong. And please do feel free to correct me in the comments section. Anyway, this is a relatively long lore tab, so let's take a listen. But don't worry, it tells us a lot. Asa settled from a long journey within an undersea cavern pocketed by air. Johan surveyed the ancient mix of rig foundations and natural stone. It seemed quiet enough, and Sloane needed rest. No hive barnacles grew there. Asa had swam far from the largest concentrations of hive and taken, and hid away in a cove tucked beneath Golden Age wreckage. Asa filled the yawning space. She slipped through gaps and wrapped herself around plunging stalactites, her serpent worm segmentations gripping the stone, her face half submerged in slick methane liquid. Johan floated down from Asa's back and turned to see Sloane slide and crumple to the cave floor as trails of steam seeped from the cracks in the ground beneath her. Sloane closed her eyes. It's cold here, but the steam. It's warm she said weakly. The worm coiled a section of her body around Sloane, trapping in the heat around her. Shiohan watched every exchange between the two and drifted out of Sloane's earshot to the worm's gargantuan face. Asa's attention snapped to the blades now protruding from the ghost's shell. Little insert here, by the way, this is actually a feature of Sloane's ghost. It has blades that can retract from it, and then all of a sudden she can use them as some basic kind of offensive weapon. Interesting modification. Would love it if our ghost had that, but also it feels like a very Sloan thing to do. Very survivalist. Anyway, back to the reading. The ghost got good and close. I don't know why you helped us. You seem nice. I, I hope you stay that way. If you're using her, if you turn coat... Johan sliced the air. I'll gut you. Asa's massive eye dialed in on Johan's iris. The two stared unblinkingly until the worm's eyelid gently closed. She emitted a tone of contrite harmonic equilibrium. 
I am not your enemy. The ghost scanned the worm's face, and upon seeing its benign softness, retired to the coiled shelter Asa had woven them. Sloane sat in meditation within, radiating a sense of peace that Shahan hadn't felt from her in months. The ghost let herself pretend for a moment that even she felt almost safe. It was morning before Sloane woke. Arsa met Sloane's eyes through her visor. The tilt of her enormous head signaled a sort of greeting or eagerness. Sloane removed her helmet. Need something? Ayat, Ayat, Asa, Ayat, Ayat. Sloane stumbled backwards into the cavern wall. Shohan perked up into the air. Boss? Sloane inhaled sharply and dropped to a knee as her ghost swooped in front of her and turned to the creature. Before she could speak, Sloane's hand was on her shell, patting her. It's fine. It's... Uh, Asa. What's an Asa? Shohan questioned. Some kind of... Proto-worm? Like Hive? Shohan deployed her blades. No. The Hive was something before they were Hive, right? The Worm Gods were too. Asa is... Her name, I think. The ghost turned to Sloane, then to Asa. What does she want? To not be alone, Sloane responded. To be known? Johan retreated closer to Sloane and sheathed her blades. Right then, we like big powerful allies. Let's see what they have to say. A joyful shiver trundled from Asa's head down through her coiled form, rippling the methane pooled around her, sending tremors through the stone, causing crumbled dust to rain from overhead. Asa turned and focused on the pair. Her massive eye spanned well beyond Sloane's entire body. The worm's sympathetic iris flexed and shimmered in hypnotic fluctuations, drawing Sloane into a disassociative state. Ayat, Ayat, Asa, Ayat, Ayat. Sloane tumbled through timeless alien remembrances. She was shown them, spoke of them, as if they are her own. Origins and sorrows she now shared. Witness offered powerful curse, a lust, masquerading as love. Sloane exhaled hard, but Asa maintained her gaze, and Sloane was swept back into the current. A blade with ambition. I, I don't... I don't understand. Flashes of fratricidal frenzy ensue. A slither mass carnage. Those once ever bonded now drive fang and lash of tail, proclaim deep magics once thought too cruel to utter, all in pursuit of a sacred, gifted logic. Before we continue, just to jump in here, Fratricidal means the murder of one's family. Slither mass carnage indicates the scale of the conflict. Imagine 10, 20 different worms of Asa's size, all of them fighting all at once. And suddenly, you have an idea of what happened. Vortexes that drink empty fathoms of encrimsoned fundament sea churn above the fray. Asa cannot escape the rive without unraveling from her captors with violence. She stains her fangs with the flesh of siblings turned rivals. Blood betrays blood to prove strength. Survival is pain. Asa flees, familial aftertaste in her mouth. She would never know love again. This gift sours theirs, 
makes it vicious and hungry. Rejected logic. Hunted as tra traitor. Lost like you. Asa dives into an ascendant dream. Cosmic language bathes her as she ventures. Radio songs and magnetic roars that bellow across space. She slips between worlds across great distances, reaches back into space to glide along the curvature of galaxies, chasing a distant point of light, a solar opposite to that which takes love. Sloane gasped for air. She came here for a chance to live. Asa crashed through Titan's thick skin into its methane sea. The expansion of humanity across Sol unfolds as she mourns. Within a golden age, a bond is formed. The collapse found them. A bond is lost. She wages a battle of grief, fights against nightmares of despair. The Disciple of Fear struck Asa. I... Johan peeked at the title. Lost. Re retreating. Love wanes. The ebb and flow of hope. Bonded we live. Asa's story becomes a whole lot clearer with Sloane's visions and what she actually felt and experienced, not just what she said. The witness came to Asa's homeworld and offered Asa's species a similar deal as the worm gods offered to the hive. It offered them a grand logic and probably the power that came with it. Some accepted this curse, as Asa would call it, and others rejected it. Those who accepted the Witness's curse fought with those who did not. It was family against family. Much to Asa's regret, she could not escape the planet and the conflict without writhing in violence against those that she had once called brother and sister. Her siblings were turned rivals in the sword logic in her bid to escape. She somehow managed to flee the planet upon which all of this was taking place. Seemingly, she did so by traveling through the Ascendant space at some point, along the curvature of galaxies at another. It's possible that she could have been referring to the Ascendant plane here, and that the way of travel used was either the Sea of Screams and its vast emptiness, or the Ley Lines which might have given a more direct purchase en route. The reality is that we don't know for sure. It's perhaps impossible to truly see the method by which Arsa was able to shift from one planet to another. It's also probably the case that if the Ascendant Realm has existed for a long time, then it was likely different in those primeval times, before Sol was truly part of Destiny's story. However, there is one detail that is incredibly important within this passage. The planet she escaped from is named Fundament. We'll come back to that in just a moment. There's someone here named the Disciple of Fear as well, who seemingly struck Asa at one point. Contextual clues and the use of the word nightmares in the earlier sentence makes me think that this was something to do with Nezarek. Asa supposedly existed within the Golden Age of Humanity and formed a bond with someone, a bond that was broken during the Collapse. Now Asa has bonded to Sloane so that they might both live. Whilst there are still a lot of blanks to fill in here, I think one thing that we can immediately sense is this, and it's quite tantalizing. It seems that Asa is implying that her species diverged with this choice offered to them by the Witness. One branch of it turned to darkness, and it seems to be implied that they may have become the Worm Gods. Asa, on the other hand, kept her nature and continued to pursue the bonds of family and love where she could, though there would be few, seeing as she believes that she is the last of her kind. This leaves me with a dozen different questions and possibilities. If the Worm Gods were originally on Fundament and Asa fled, what became of the conflict there? Does this potentially give us some interesting ideas as to what happened 
which would have led to Saita and her five offspring being trapped in the depths of Fundament. Is it possible that the Witness's servants, those that accepted its curse, actually lost this war between Arsa's main species and those that wished to join the Witness? Is it perhaps the case that the Leviathan was guarding them in order to keep their knowledge of the sword logic contained? If Arsa is from the same base species as the Worm Gods, then maybe all of this makes some sense. Arsa fled, but the Leviathan, being stronger perhaps than many others, was able to contain the Worm Gods and Zyta beneath Fundament's great oceans, in a place where it could guard them forevermore. It's also worth noting that if everything we've learned here is true, if Arsa is from the same base species as the Worm Gods, then with perhaps the exception of the Witness and maybe a few of its disciples like Rulk, she is the most ancient thing to have ever entered the Sol system. She is truly beyond fathoms as far as her age is concerned, and the wisdom that she must contain, the depths of sorrow that she must hold, all of it must be overwhelming. All of this is fascinating, of course, and it was an important series of details to share with you as we begin our story of Sloan and Asa. This is something we will pick up later, and it's something which we'll be going back in time for as we look to Sloan's story as she begins to explore the depths. For the rest of it, well, wait a couple of days, wait for next week, we'll be continuing this periodically as the season goes on. For now though, that is all, and I want to pose the question to you. What do you think? Is Asa a proto-worm god? If that's the case, what does that mean for the rest of her species? What does that mean for the three that are still out there? Do you reckon that there's a chance for some of them to be seen here on Titan? Do you reckon that there's something else going on that Asa hasn't quite explained? Do you reckon that we're just scraping the surface? I think that so many mysteries are about to unfold here, and these are questions that honestly, we've been waiting for the answers for for years. So, it'll be very interesting to see. There is one last thing I want to point out. Asa, if she is a proto-worm god, may have evolved differently from the others who remained worm gods. It's unknown if this is the case, because obviously evolution is meant to happen through generations. But the point is that the worm gods evolved different powers thanks to their pact with the Witness, if this is what's happened, after all. The reason I raise this is because the worm gods seem to have an interesting series of powers that are also linked to Ahamkara, the ability to trap individuals within bargains, something which the Ahamkara use for wish magic, something which has been evolved and presents itself as the oh-noun-mine approach to conversation. We'll need to see if Asa uses that. It may tell us a little bit more about who she is, what she does, and everything in between. It may tell us about how the worm gods may have evolved differently from this proto-worm god. Anyway, all of that being said, again, you can discuss that down below in the comments if you are so interested. But, as per usual, know that your viewership as always is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife, Rodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.